Hello, everybody, and welcome to New Earth Teachings Live, where today we have a special presentation with Empathic Interfacing Live. So today we're going to be uh, doing a group uh, Empathic Interfacing, as we have before, with Athena of the inner Earth civilization known as Delphi. So that'll be coming up in just a few minutes. I got quite a few announcements that I'm going to be sharing uh, before we get started today. So the first announcement is... Uh, that we have the promo code Athena20 to receive 20% uh, discount off all products and services on New Earth Teachings. So just go to newearthteachings.com. You can grab any session or any product you like. And when you get to the promo code area, just uh, in insert in capital letters Athena20. So all in caps, Athena20, and that will give you a 20% discount off uh, the product or session of your choice. You can also order multiple products or multiple sessions, and that will also give you the 20% discount as well too. So this is good until the end of day <clears throat> on Monday. So we have four days of this uh, promo code that is available. And again, it's Athena20, 20% 20 discount off all products and services on newearthteachings.com. So that is available right now. All right, moving on to our next announcement. Again, I have the Patreon, New Earth Teachings online classroom that is up and running as well, too. I have quite a lot of members already. And every Monday, we hold a 90-minute private, private group session uh, chat, and we talk about any particular topics you want. We also do uh, healing in the group as well, too. And, of course, there's, a, there's multiple areas of healing that you can work with or, again, someone who you want to uh, have healing done for. That is also available as well, too. So also on Patreon, I have uh, courses that are up as well, too. The Akashic Records Home Study course is on the New Earth Teachings Online Classroom. The uh, Law of Attraction Unlimited, uh, sorry, uh, Law of Attraction Unleashed is up there as well, too. The uh, Merkaba Meditation Series is up there as well, too. Plus, uh, Patreon, patrons who sign up uh, for $20 per month, they also get a free three-question email session per month as well, too. And of course, you can attend the class and of course, all recordings of the classroom are put up on Patreon as well. You can also send requests for any videos uh, specifically for Patreon that you would like me to do. And that will also be up on Patreon as well, to, as well too. So you can just go to patreon.com slash new earth teachings and feel free to sign up. And again, I've had two amazing classes with some really amazing people. we got a really good community forming here on the Patreon uh, website. So go ahead and sign up as well too, patreon.com slash New Earth Teachings. Okay, moving on to our next announcement. For everybody who wants to understand more about their spiritual truth, spiritual understandings, who wants to come for a healing, who wants to be part of a spiritual community, who really wants to meet amazing experts, people gifted in their fields relating to healing, metaphysics, consciousness, channeling, psychic development, intuitive development. All of these amazing people are all under one roof. The Empowered Light Expo is the greatest exposition of consciousness, exopolitical, and UFO studies I've ever seen. There are so many intuitive and gifted people who are instruments of the divine, making their products, creating it, selling it, sharing their gifts of insight and wisdom as instruments of the divine. It is some of the greatest speakers on these topics, talking on things that will blow your mind. What we are sharing with everybody here is the importance of love, the importance of compassion, the importance of working together, the importance of coming together, the importance of forming community. The demonstration of love will be presented, for it is love itself that expands you into the levels of the highest degrees. Love is always the way. You're coming to the Empowered Light Expo. Expect to be changed. This can transform your life.
Okay, so the Empowered Light Expo is coming back uh, September 6th to 8th. I will be back there in Oaks, Pennsylvania uh, to do the uh, do an Adronis uh, evening event on the Friday, and that is going to be about the Golden Age, 2037 and 2038. And for the weekend, I will also be doing Spirit, uh, Spirit Ambassador Certification Training. So that'll be a weekend long uh, classroom that'll be happening uh, in Oaks, Pennsylvania at the Empowered Light Expo. So tickets are now available, and uh, with the uh, weekend workshop, this is going to be really amazing. Uh, they're about it's about six hours together in totality. You're going to learn all about uh, spirit communication. You're going to learn all about preparing yourself as a vessel, and you'll also be initiated in the spirit codes, uh, light healing practice as well too. And of course, moving on, uh, Mount Shasta, as we know, it is coming up here very fast. So I'll be uh, there in a little bit over three weeks' time. So the Mount Shasta Spirit Ambassador Retreat and Activation, we still got a couple spots left for anybody who's interested in joining me for the Mount Shasta Spirit Ambassador Retreat and Activation. Just go to uh, newearthteachings.com on the homepage, click on this poster, and you'll find all the information about it. I have talked about it in many weeks past, so I'm not going to go too much into it today. But again, you'll find all the incredible uh incredible activities that we're going to be doing. It is also a certification course, so you'll be trained to become an EQ method practitioner, as well as being initiated into uh, spirit, code light, uh, spirit light code healing as well, too. So again, just go to newearthteachings.com, click on the poster, you'll be taken to the event page on Empowered Light Expo, and you can find all the information about it. Again, it's, it's going to be an incredible adventure here, just coming up here in a couple of weeks. And of course, finally, the South Africa Tour, Cosmic Exploration Tour of South Africa. You can also find this on NearEarthTeachings.com, or you just go to WonderWorld.Vacations, and you'll see the uh, South Africa with Michael Tallinger and myself uh, image there. And of course, we're looking into the Anunnaki, Mankind, Giants in Gold. Uh, uh, Michael Tallinger will be doing a lot of his uh, sharing of research into all the sites that we visit. Adronis will be coming through, sharing his uh, extraterrestrial perspective on everything. And of course, we will also be having remote viewing sessions, group sessions, where we'll be looking into uh, inner time traveling, inner remote viewing, inner time traveling, and looking into these sites hundreds or even thousands of years ago. We are also going to do the same thing in Mount Shasta as well, too. So again, wonderworld.vacations, South Africa tour with Michael Tallinger and myself. Okay, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started with the Empathic Interfacing Live today. So as you guys may have been here uh, in previous Empathic Interfacing Lives, if you have not been here before for one, you're in for a treat. So really what we're going to do, let me just uh, turn on my light here so I don't look so dark. There we go. So what we're going to do today is we're going to be getting ourselves into a preparation process where we're going to empathically connect to Athena together, okay? So I have done this in previous Empathic Interfacing Live uh, broadcasts. So with this interaction, you're going to be able to connect with her as well too at the same time that I am. And the interesting thing is that everybody will have their own form of information. I'll be sharing what I can with uh, Athena as I have in the past. And you guys may have some interesting things that you may want to share uh, if Athena speaks to you as well too. And you can put that up on the chat. And of course, we'll look into that a little bit later on. But you guys also have, uh, can also do Q&A uh, with myself and Athena when she is in here uh, in, in, uh, in the connected state. So it's basically three tiers representing our connection with Athena. So we're going to basically step up the tiers to ensure that we have a very strong, pure, loving connection with Athena. And this is what, what I teach people when they get into channeling, is that we basically do what's known as the th three-tier approach to having a strong, established, pure connection. Okay, so we'll be doing that. Now, again, if you guys aren't too sure what Athena looks like, you'll see a rendition of her here on the right. So the, uh, the Delphi are very much kind of like albino, like they have very pale white skin. They have kind of a pinkish red eyes and uh, actually their eyebrows are a little bit whitish as well too. In this rendition, uh, Athena's are a little bit black, but in actuality, her eyebrows are a little bit more uh, whiter. She's a very, very beautiful, uh, very beautiful uh, contacty. Uh, I wouldn't say contacty, but basically a very beautiful specialist. She has a, just amazing, uh, empathetic, loving, open heart. She's very knowledgeable as well too. 
In the past, I have spoken to her older brother, uh, Nefertitis, uh, but he doesn't really want to do these anymore. So, <laughs> so Athena has stepped in, and she's very happy to do them. She loves doing them. I can feel that there's a lot more passion in her doing these than her, uh, her older brother, Nefertitis. Now, Athena is not even really her name. That's just a name that has been chosen, of course, going back into the Greek goddess Athena. And so that is what she is representing here, uh, not representing the Greek goddess herself, but basically using that name as, in that sense, the divine feminine. So, again, take a moment just to uh, look into Athena's rendition here, and this is going to help you to connect with her all together. And again, we're going to do it all together here in this group preparation process. So, what we're going to do firstly is we're going to, and hello everybody, I'm getting a lot of hellos on the chat. Hi guys, hi everybody. Welcome to uh, Empathic Interfacing Live. I'm glad so many people are here. It's wonderful. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to get ourselves into the grounded state. So what I want you to do is just placing your feet firmly on the ground. If you're standing, if you're sitting down, uh, even if you're lying down, that's okay too. But if you're sitting down, just have your feet firmly placed upon the ground. Make sure your feet are not crossed. Okay, we don't want to short circuit the body. So just firmly placed upon the ground. If you want to go in lotus position as well, too, that's totally fine. That's a different type of crossing, so that's okay. Basically, with uh, the legs, we just don't want them crossed kind of like this, right, if we're sitting, because that creates a short circuit. The energy can't run properly if we do that. <clears throat> but if you're in a half lotus or full lotus or your legs are crossed, totally fine. So again, we're just going to ground ourselves, and we're just going to imagine the roots of our feet coming out and going deeply into the earth. And now we're just going to take some deep breaths. So taking a deep breath in, deep breath out. And once again, deep breath in, deep breath out. And one more time, deep breath in, and deep breath out. Okay. And feeling those roots going into the earth right now, I just want you to feel like you're pulling up the brown energy. Brown energy, like the soil, is moving up into your feet, moving up into your ankles, moving up to your legs, your knees, moving all the way up to your hips, into your waist. And now just connecting and blending that together with the chakra centers. So feeling the brown energy mixing together with the root of the spine and just mixing it into the red color of root moving up into the orange color of navel, moving up next into the yellow color of the solar plexus, moving up into the green color of the heart and the thymus area, moving up into the thyroid, throat chakra, ocean or uh, uh, sky blue or aquamarine, and moving up to the third eye, ocean blue, and moving up into the crown, violet and or ultraviolet. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to contract your rectal muscle, and I just want you to inhale. And just feel your breath going all the way up to the top of your head. Feel it, the crown chakra opening up like an unfolding fan, exhaling nice and slowly, releasing the rectal muscle, and just feeling like a cascading waterfall of rainbow energy is coming down the body connecting to the feet, connecting to the perineum, and just feeling that toroidal field, the shape of the torus, just very slowly rotating. Even if you can't see it, that's okay. Just feel it. Just feel the slow rotation of the rainbow energy torus field that represents your energy field, slowly rotating. And now you are completely in alignment to receive spiritual cosmic energy. Okay, so we're just going to bring that cosmic energy down as well too. Okay, so I just want you to feel kind of a golden light pattern, kind of like gold and silver, just starting to move itself down like it's coming down from the heavens and it's a pillar of light and it's just coming down and it's just shining your body. Your whole body is just being shined with this gold and silver energy. And it feels like it's just converging in the center of your body and everything is now just moving itself subtly through the body as you have this gold and silver shine of the spiritual energy grounded with the earth energy as well, too. Okay, so we'll take another deep breath in, another deep breath out. 
And now we are going to go ahead and give the intention to empathically connect to Athena. So this is not really in that sense a channeling state because we're not really becoming the energy of Athena. But what we are doing is we're setting up a link, right? It's like a tether, a tether of, of your heart connecting directly to Athena's heart. So again, I'll just put the graphic up once again. So I want you now just to look at Athena and just saying that this is Athena. I'm going to connect with her right now. And we're going to start off with the first tier. And so the first tier is going to get ourselves into a receptive state. And I just want you to imagine within your mind right now that you're entering a realm of white light. Okay, white light is completely covering this realm. And directly in the center of this white light realm is Athena. Okay, you're just seeing her in the center, sitting in this white light realm. I want you now just to notice her heart. I want you to feel her heart beating inside her chest. Okay, now she has this tether that's coming out and it's meeting together with yours. Okay, the tether is now connecting. So now we are establishing an empathic connection, an empathic link together with Athena. And now I will say to Athena, I come to you in pure loving light. Does your love match the love that I send you? And she's nodding her head, yes. Okay, so that's the first tier. It's relating to that of pure love. We're now going to take another deep breath in, deep breath out. We're going to feel ourselves getting a lot more softer, feeling a nice joyful feeling here, moving ourselves up into the second tier. And I'm saying now to Athena, I come before you in pure Christed light and unconditional service. Does your energy match this service? Yes, she's nodding her head once again, okay? All right, so we'll take another deep breath in, another deep breath out. Lightening ourselves up even more, feeling softer, more subtle, lifting ourselves up into the third tier. Athena, I come to you in service of God, in service of the Divine Mother, of the Divine Father, in service to the One Infinite Creator. Does your energy reciprocate this service to the one infinite creator. And she's smiling and saying yes. Okay, very good. So again, you guys can just reciprocate that if you wish. But again, the important part is that we're just going up into the three tiers. Okay, so this is helping us to again, uh, form a very strong uh, empathic bond together with Athena. And it is a love connection. Okay, so when you know that the entity that you're communicating with is nodding their head and saying yes, that they're with you, all three tiers, you have a very, very loving energy with you. Now, basically what would happen is if it was, for example, an imposter being, and I'm here at the first tier, and they can't, they can't come up to love, they drop. They instantly drop, and they can't even be there. As soon as you mention that pure intention of love, they won't be there. They'll just drop out of the, out of the picture altogether, and when that happens, that's okay. Take a deep breath in, take a deep breath out. And this is helping you to go more deeper within. And what happens as well too with these quote unquote imposter beings is that we'll just look at things at surface value. We'll look at things on the surface and we'll think, oh, this must be a really uh, beautiful being to connect with. But again, there can be imposters out there. Now, personally for myself, I've never experienced one. I've, when I've connected with Adronis, there's never been a point where he's, when he's dropped away. When I've connected with Athena, there's never been a point where she's dropped away. When I've connected with Nephrotitis, there was never a point where he dropped away. So sometimes this does happen. I have heard from people that do have imposter beings that come together. And then when they do the three tiers, or even just a one tier as well too, um, that being either drops away or they stay depending upon the, uh, the, the natural authenticity of their love state. But again, Athena for me has moved into all three tiers. So we are ready to begin some empathic interfacing today. And again, uh, we'll be taking a Q and A here probably in a few minutes, but I'm just going to reach out to Athena now. And I'm just going to ask Athena if there's any uh, new updates, any information that she would like to share. She says, things are, things are moving ahead. She's had some visitations with other beings that exist within the inner earth as well too. There's much more of a community that is starting to form inside the inner earth. It's like many of these doors, as it were, are being opened, and there's a lot more communion happening. 
So there's a lot of different travelers, you could say, that exist internally in the earth. And they often have transports like conveyances as well, too. And they can pass through matter. And they are invited into our space. And we are also invited into theirs. Just recently, she was actually able to go to Mount Shasta. This is what she's telling me as well, too. Not in the physical, but through an astral projection. She was able to go into Mount Shasta. She was able to look into the Telosian civilization as well, too. Crystals abundant. Crystals everywhere. Loving beings. Very heart-centered, very warm, very welcoming. They hold a lot of Lemurian history as well, too, from what she's seeing. She really, really enjoyed her trip. So they shared a lot of their own ancient philosophies as well, too, with the Telosians. And Telosians were able to share a lot of their philosophies, looking back into uh, ancient Lemurian understandings as well, too, philosophies. And they had a wonderful uh, meeting. There's a lot more cooperation happening in the inner earth, just as we're going to start noticing that there'll be a lot more cooperation coming together here at the surface. She just is reminding us, remember that everything's a mirror, that as you start to see that cooperation is going to unfold upon the surface, you're going to start to see cooperation unfold here uh, in the inner earth as well, too. She's also uh, saying to me as well that there's, there's a lot of activity happening out in space right now as well, too. A lot more peaceful activity, right? It's not, it's not violent. So this is kind of like what um, Adronis was talking about with uh, the moon, with what's happening on the moon. It's under new management. And so there is, there's uh, negotiations happening. And what's going to happen as well, too, because I'll come back to Athena in a moment. What's happening is that it's not about barging onto the moon and trying to shoot people and be forceful in that way. That's not how they work. That's not how the Confederation works. They work together with negotiations simply because the entire moon is a set of treaties. There's all kinds of treaties on the moon, right? And there's certain sections of the moon that are activated. And there are certain groups, such as the Orions, that basically have this kind of technology um, bombarding the Earth in that way. So what's happening right now is that there's a mutual negotiation coming together to reach a state of consensus to power down and deactivate certain sections of the moon. So certain areas are going to be powered down. This will take a bit of time. This will transition. But that's exactly what is in the works. It's not all just going to cease all at once. Because again, you have multiple civilizations living on the moon. You have multiple treaties that are taking place and there has to be negotiation. Basically having to be convinced you need to stop this stuff. You need to stop this idea of control. So there needs to be negotiation. It needs to be working out. It's not about just going in there with guns blazing and shooting people. And that's not going to resolve anything because that, that fear and that terror is only going to bring more fear and terror, bringing that back you know, throughout the cycle of history. So whatever, whatever we uh, do uh, in a very doomed state of being, uh, history is going to repeat itself in that doomed type of fashion. So we want to ensure that there is negotiation happening <clears throat> on the moon, but there's a lot of progress happening. So it's kind of like everything that we're experiencing here pertaining to our sociological platforms, our political platforms, monetary platforms, financial platforms, career platforms, education, etc. <clears throat> some version of that is happening within the earth and some of it's happening beyond the earth as well too. So from what Athena is sharing here is that there's a lot of peace. There's actually been uh, some communications that she's been getting telepathically as well too there's also been projections coming in for the delphi as well too because she knows that we're interested in a lot of this this information so she wants to be heavily involved and start talking to a lot of these other quote-unquote ambassadors or delegates uh, again some of them will be in the inner earth some of them will be extraterrestrial uh, in that nature as well too so i'm just asking uh, athena if there was anything else that she wanted to share she says we understand that there are many of you that are interested in in coming into the inner earth. Again, more of the doors to the inner earth are going to be more available at the end of this age. Okay, so basically as we move past 2037, 2038, she said there's still a lot of things that we're doing. We're still trying to get ourselves together. We're not in a perfect alignment right now. There's a lot of things that are basically uh, looking to be addressed, and she wants to work together with a lot of other um I guess you could say, uh, civilizations within the inner earth for them to come together because they're preparing themselves for the big shift. They're preparing themselves for 2037. So they're getting themselves ready. Uh, and I would ask, like, what is, what is this process? She says, just a lot of meditation, a lot of meditation, a lot of personal space, a lot of love blessing, a blessing of our environment. 
we're really, uh, uh, I guess you could say, indulging ourselves with greater states of peace, with greater states of joy. And we want to share that with our neighbors. So we want to share that with the inner earth. We want to share that with you as well, too, even though many of us do not come to the surface. Uh, speaking for the Delphi, of course, not doesn't mean that every single inner earth being isn't going to come to the surface. The Delphi just prefer not to do that because they don't want to interfere with a lot of the affairs that's happening on the surface. And she's saying, well, that's your karma. You have to work out your karma. You have to sort things out with yourself. And when there's much more of a harmony, this will open doors. This is where a lot of the inner earth beings will come in and start to uh, work themselves into integrating themselves into civilization. But she says that's mostly going to happen in the next age. That's not really going to happen in this one. This one, there needs to be preparation. You have to get yourselves organized as well, too. You have to get yourselves prepared. You need to start working on yourselves. You have to let go of all of these trivial things that have nothing to do with your inner self-evolution, from what she is saying here. You have to drop all of these unnecessities, all of these things that are distracting you, all of these things that are making you worry, all of these things that are making you upset. You have to drop them. You have to learn to let go of those things that no longer matter. You have to get yourselves ready. You do not have a lot of time to get yourselves in this preparation process. And it does take some time to really get prepared and to integrate all of this knowledge, all of this information, all of this insight, all of this new way of being. You have to understand what you can separate from what is the old paradigm and moving more into the new paradigm. You have to take time for this. You have to learn to evolve yourselves. If you know it's something you don't prefer, why do you continue to dwell upon it? And this is even, she said, we don't really understand why you do that, <laughs> right? It's, it's kind of like the old saying, we're making, it, making a mountain out of a molehill. If we're doing things that we know we don't like, if we're around people in that sense that are not complimenting us, why do you not move away in peace? Why do you not withdraw? Why don't you withdraw from those people? Why don't you work on moving yourself into new integration, into love, right? So just let those people be there with what they have to deal with. Don't try to intervene upon their own personal space and their own personal development. That becomes a knot, a tied knot. And now you are kinked inside that knot and you're taking in their pain. And that's not what you do. That's not being sacred to them. Right? This is, again, um, Athena's own words. Right? If you start barging into another person's life who may not see what you're doing, who may not like what you're doing, and you want to try and help them so much when they're not asking you, you're disrespecting them. You're disrespecting their own journey. You have to let them figure this out for themselves. They are free will, thinking human beings just as you are. You have to stop butting in to people's lives, thinking you have to change them. It does not matter if they are your mother, if they are your father, if they are your brother, your sister, your son, your daughter, you have to let them figure these things out for themselves. And when they are open to receiving assistance from you, you will know it. This is something they do not do in the Delphi. They never ever intrude upon another person's space when they're in pain. They let that person be with their pain. And when that person's pain now starts to subside, there is a magnetic attraction that comes together. They will bring themselves together. They'll feel it. They'll feel when that pain of that, that person subsides and they'll come closer uh, and, and start to work together in that way. But when they notice one of their own people is in pain, no one will go near them. They won't even go near them. That person needs to be in their pain. They need to look at this. They need to resolve this completely. Stay out of their way, right? It's kind of like what uh, Bashar has talked about through one of his sayings, right? Shivai. I am on my path. I'm completely in my, in my power. Stand aside. I'm coming through. Okay. This is what you have to do. You have to leave an open path so that they can shivai. Right. Very, very important. And this is again, what the, the, um, the, the Delphi, that's their entire way of life. They will never, ever try and sue the person who is in pain, who they know does not want their help, does not want their assistance. If they're <clears throat> wallowing in pain, if they're very, very upset, they completely leave their space, right? They will certainly send love and good intentions around them, but they will not intrude upon their space. And so let me help you. Let me, let me fix you because something's wrong with you. That is ultimately disrespectful in their eyes, right? They would never do that. So this is in that sense, why 
we're not really going into the inner earth, we don't know how they live. We don't know their culture. We don't know exactly their own philosophies and their own understandings. And it's going to take time for them to, to share that with us, right? We can't just do it through a simple video transmission like this. This is going to take time of, uh, of being able to understand a culture. It's like how you're going to a foreign country and they have other mannerisms. They have other cultural understandings and you have to integrate into that together. So basically, if you were to go into the Delphi, if you were to go underneath the Delphi, I would say, and going into the inner earth that they reside, and you start seeing people in pain, oh, are you okay? Hey, let me help you. They, they would consider that completely disrespectful, right? You would, they would basically pull you aside and say, leave him alone, leave her alone, right? They are going, they're going through a fasting right now. And that's kind of what it is in, their, in, in Athena's eyes. She said, it's kind of like a pain fasting. People are basically alone in their own space and they're pain fasting. They're crying. They're very upset. They're very angry because this happens. This happens in the Delphi as well, too. They can connect to see how humanity is doing. They can connect to seeing how their relatives are doing. And people can still get angry. People can still get upset. But it's their own tradition to leave that person alone and let them go through pain fasting. Okay, so that's kind of what she refers to it as, is a type of pain fasting. This is, this is fascinating, right? Um, and it's something I haven't even really considered too, because I've been like that as well too. I see someone upset, right? I want to go up and I want to help them out, but they say no, because you are, you're being completely unsacred to their space by doing that. You have to let them pain fast. It's when they give an invitation for you to come in, then you can certainly come in because now they want your help. It's not saying that if they want your help, that you're ignoring them. No, they have to get through all this pain because they're in a mentality where they don't want help. They don't want assistance in any way, and you will therefore have an invitation, should that happen, for that person to invite you in, if they want to talk to you in that way. Of course, we as humans, commonly in the Western civilization, don't know this, right? We feel that all we want to see is how a person is impaired. All we want to see is how a person is damaged, and we want to fix them. We want to get out our toolkit, and we want to start repairing them in that way. And she even says, that's extremely disrespectful. Why are you not seeing their heart? Why are you not seeing their soul? Why are you only looking at them on the surface? They are going through pain fasting. Leave them be. Right. So that's kind of a new perspective <laughs> looking into this uh, to really getting a, a greater grasp and saying that if a person's in pain and they don't want your help, leave them alone. Let them go through their pain fasting. However long it takes, doesn't matter. They may say, well, Brad, it may be many weeks before they decide to open up. Well, that's fine. Stop trying to control people. Stop trying to change people, right? And I get that a lot in sessions. I mean, my, my mother isn't, isn't believing anything that I'm doing. So what? My father can't really understand what I'm doing. So what? Does everybody have to understand you? No. You can't even prove to another person that you even exist. Why do you have to try and get this impression of them that people have to understand you? That again, what you're doing is you're trying to appease people too much. You're trying to control the situation. You're trying to make reality completely yours and bypassing everybody else's free will in the same process. And this is again kind of what Athena is saying as well too, is that it's not about you, right? You have your own space. You have your own pain, your own work to do. But don't be imposing that upon other people because that is extremely unsacred, right? That is, that is uh, completely disrespectful to them. They have their own journey. You have to understand people have their own journey. You have to understand there's free will human beings on this planet. They have their own choices. They're, they have their own actions. They have their own decisions. They are not instantly going to say, oh, yeah, I get it completely what you're doing. I get completely what your spiritual journey is. I can under completely understand that you're working together with the one infinite creator, and that you're returning back into the interstellar cosmos of your nature, of the soul, of, the, of your own being. <laughs> They're not really going to burst out into song with that. You notice that there's going to be different arrays of people that are going to give you different perspectives and they may not get what you're all about. They may not understand your philosophies. They may not understand exactly how you think and they don't have to. So again, you have to get that, that image out of your head. It's all part of an old control program that we have been brought up with that if a person is ill, a person is damaged, a person needs repair, we need to go in, we fix them because they're impaired and they're suffering and they don't know what the hell they're doing. We got to do it for them. That is complete and total arrogance. 
right? So we have to be watchful for that. We need to be mindful of that. Like I said, I'm guilty of that in the past as well too, because I've done that. I've done those arrogant things myself. So this again is what Athena is saying is that, you know, there, there's a whole different culture that is involved with the inner earth. And you have to become very familiar with that culture. You don't just walk right into a foreign country and think that you know all the ways of the people, right? You want to become familiar. You want to do your research. You want to speak to people. You want to talk to them. You want to see how you can integrate that and be open to it yourself, okay? So that's, again, what Athena wants to share is that basically there's a lot of uh, movement happening within the inner earth civilizations. Inner earth civilizations are getting together right now. They're starting to work together. There's a lot of preparation for the idea of the end of the age. And of course, she's also talking about pain fasting. So I find this very, very fascinating. And again, it's confirming a lot of what Adronis has shared pertaining to what's happening on the moon. A lot of negotiations happening there. A lot of negotiations happening here on the surface. A lot of negotiations happening in the inner earth. You see how it all interconnects. It's a beautiful thing. It's like music. It's a symphony. Okay, guys, so we're going to go ahead and get started with some questions. If you guys do have any questions for myself or for uh, Athena, nothing with Adronis today. Adronis isn't going to be a part of today's uh, interaction. So just for Athena or myself. So I'm just kind of scrolling up the uh, chat here. And hello, everybody from Netherlands, from Finland, from Washington State, from Arizona, Venezuela. Great. <laughs> hello from Denver, from Ireland, from Ottawa, um, from England. This is great. We, South Africa, right? We're getting people all over the world here. This is great. I love all this diversity of people here watching live. Love from Pennsylvania. Netherlands again. <laughs> all right. So let's scroll down, see if we have any questions for Athena or if you guys have any connections. If you felt a connection with Athena or she's told you something, you can feel free to share it as well too. Pardon me. <clears throat> um Okay, here's, here's one from Felix. Felix says, first contact with inner earth is planned for the next age. Okay, not for, not for right now. We don't have time for that. Okay, this is kind of Athena's perspective as well too. She, she knows how many of you would like to come into the inner earth and start living here. You can't do that, right? It's, it's because you are not familiar with the culture. First, you have to understand that Athena exists in fourth density. Okay, and that the Delphi exist in fourth density. You're still a hybridization between the third and the fourth. You're not quite compatible with their own space right now. There are some beings that exist in third density in the inner earth, but where they exist, they're fourth density. Right? So they're creating a technological pocket of fourth density. You couldn't go there. You're not in the alignment. You would have to basically be altered in certain ways for you to even get into their own domain. Right? So you couldn't even go and see the Delphi right now, even if you wanted to. This is why we connect to Athena in this way. But she, they basically have technological apparatus done through crystals, done through prayer as well too, done through sound and song that initiates them into remaining in a fourth density. So it's kind of like they're in a third density realm, but they've created a pocket of fourth density. And that's what their entire uh, infrastructure represents, is that they're contained in the fourth so as we're still transitioning from the third into the fourth, we're not compatible completely with their energy right now. So the Delphi really couldn't come up and contact us even if they wanted to right now because humanity isn't in that right. It's kind of like you're seeing this pipe, right? And there's like water going through this pipe, but there's also sludge going through this pipe right now, but it's all moving, right? It's kind of like we're looking above here on the surface and that's what's happening with this pipe. There's some clean water, but there's sludge as well too, and it's moving. And it's like, well, let, let's cut a hole through that pipe and let's see if we can go into that pipe. No, you're gonna get covered with water and sludge and gunk and all that stuff. And it's a transitional process. Let the water, let the sludge pass, let it pass through this pipe before we're able to go up there and, and introduce ourselves. We also want to have a simpatico connection between dimensions as well too. So like I said, it's mainly that um, the Delphi the Delphi are going to the fourth density. So that's where they're going. They're going to fourth density earth. They won't be here in the third. There will still be some inner earth civilizations here in the third, but it will not be the Delphi. The Delphi are going to the fourth. So they'll be in fourth density earth and they will be interacting with those that are in fourth density earth. And that'll be in 2038. Okay, so 2037, 2038. 2037 is the end of this age. Okay, that's a guarantee, folks. That's not a, that's not a theory. That's not a maybe. That's not a possibility. 
this age will end at the end of the year 2037. Okay, that's when it ends. The Egyptian timeline also confirms this as well too. 2038 is the start of the new age. It's a time to where the harvest has already happened and those that will move up into fourth density earth will be ones that will be experiencing a lot more of the inner earth beings of uh, spirits, dim different dimensional beings, extraterrestrials. Those in third density uh, will be slowly introduced to some inner earth beings over time. Uh, and of course, there will be some extraterrestrial contact coming in 2000, around the benchmark time of 2038 as well, too. So basically, I'm saying that, yes, there, there are going to be some extraterrestrial contacts happening in 2038. And there will be a span of several years to where there will be an initiation and integration. It's kind of like what Adronis has talked about with uh, galactic inauguration, right? So it's not actually in uh, 2036 to 2050, It'd be more closer to 2038 to 2050. So those 12 years would be a benchmark span of humanity integrating itself and being part of an interstellar alliance or being part of the confederation in that way. That's really where we're going. And, you know, uh, the Yah-Yell, for example, would be the ones that will be greeting humans more so in the fourth density. Who's going to greet humans in the third density? I don't know do not know. Um, I, I, I can't tell you that. There's really no information with that. But the Yah Yah are the ones that are basically going to come into the fourth to introduce themselves to humanity, to those in the fourth density. And some other race may be responsible. Maybe it is the Yah Yah in the third. I don't know. I'm not really getting that information for the third. But contact in that sense will start in the benchmark point of 2038. Okay. Um, Oh, Grandma, Grandmama's Angels, I'm honored to be allowed to see this for the very first time. Oh, great. I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much. And you're from Chilliwack, I believe, right? So, <laughs> in case you guys are wondering, Chilliwack exists, is, is a small town here in British Columbia. So, very nice little place as well. Um, okay, here's one from Lilypad. Lilypad asks, uh, can you give us a hand with using crystals? She said, the first thing is, if you if you don't have to touch them, try not to touch them, right? It's it, It's interesting if you want to transport them, try and try and keep their integrity intact. If you do basically put a cloth over them, like with a new, a new crystal that you may have, right? For any real crystal, she's suggesting, try not to touch them so much with your hands, right? Because you're, you're interrupting the current flow of energy that's contained inside that crystal. So if you feel a calling to a crystal that is calling to you, that's sharing itself, try not to touch it with your hands, okay? Unless it tells you it's okay to. But what you want to do is you want to just have like a cloth or something like that you can put over the crystal so you're not contaminating it with crossed energy. You're not interfering with its current. So this is what um, Athena is saying relating to us that uses crystals a lot. And I have like crystals over the desk here as well too, and I've touched them. But I can understand with what she's saying is that there's a certain crystal that you'll find, you'll, you'll feel that really, really connects with you, right? And try not to touch it with your hands. Put it over a cloth, try to wrap it up, Try just not, no, don't put your fingerprints on the crystal. You want to preserve its own natural energy. Crystals are very much alive. They have a very strong uh, divine loving intelligence to them. And the more that you keep their own energies intact, the more the preservation of their knowledge will come to you and, and share themselves to you. So that's kind of what Athena is telling me. She says, just try not to touch. Just try not to touch crystals so much that you know the ones that are speaking to you. You don't really have to do too much maintenance to them unless they are specifically requesting it. If you have a crystal that is calling your name, do not clean it. Do not clear it. Do not put it in salt water because you will damage the flow of it as well too because it is specifically aligned to all the energies that are there right now for it to communicate with you. Unless it specifically requests to be cleaned, you clean it. So you need to start treating a crystal like a being. You need to start uh, treating a crystal like a living organism. If they do not want to be cleaned, don't clean them. They do not want to be touched. Okay, so you want to be very, very careful of touching them altogether. Just maintain this this pure connection. If you're if you're in a crystal shop, for example, and you see like a Lemurian seed crystal that's talking to you, okay, and when you get the person to say, okay, I'll take this crystal, can you please put a cloth over it so your hands aren't touching it? Right, just making sure that you're preserving the energetic relating to that crystal. So when that crystal is speaking to you, it does not need to be cleaned unless it specifically requests it needs to be cleaned, okay? So it'll give you that request. So it's really just interfacing with the crystal, listening to what the crystal has to tell you, and following with what it shares, 
If it wants to be cleaned, it will tell you. If it needs more sunlight, it will tell you. So just listen to that, in, that interface connection that you have between yourself and the crystal. You don't have to do so much maintenance on crystals as people think. They are living beings. They do not need maintenance unless they specifically request it. Okay. So this is what Athena is telling me. She knows all about crystals, right? <laughs> they're there. They have, you know, gigantic crystals where they are as well too. Yeah. She says no one ever touches the crystals. No one ever puts their hands on the crystals in the Delphi. And if you do do that, it's not going to, it's not going to be too good. You probably get scolded by that. They will say, don't touch the crystals, right? They will say, don't touch it. Now the crystals within the Delphi are so powerful. Even if you try to touch it, you'll get shocked. You'll get like a shock. So because crystals are piezoelectric, right? And the, the crystals that they have in the Delphi or in the inner earth of the Delphi are so powerful that if you even try to touch it, it's like touching a, a, a powerful electrical current. So please don't touch it. Even the small crystals that we have here on the surface, try not to touch them unless specifically requested to do so. Okay. So that's what you can share relating to the crystals. All right. Again, you can, you can interface with her if you have more specific questions as well and uh, she'll be able to help you out. But that's kind of a very important over, overview that she wants to share with everybody. Okay, uh, for Sil Goldheart, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name right. Um, for Sil, a question for Athena. Can you receive an invitation to join the Inner Earth Astrally for, for communication in dream state? Is there a sort of calibration chamber before you enter this realm? She would say, please talk to us beforehand. Okay, if, if you really do have an intention, she said, it's very important that you establish a connection with me first. Okay, if you, connection, if you connect with Athena and you're able to feel her energy, you feel her speaking to you, you feel her empathic energy flowing through you, good. Work things out with her. She says, we just don't want to have astral visitors coming in. We are very protective of our space. Uh, there, there's purification rituals that have to be done. Uh, when you go inside the Delphi, even as an astral body, okay, you have to basically be purified. You're going to be met at the gate. Okay, so that's kind of what she's saying. You're going to be met at the gate, and you're going to be going through some purification, even in your astral body. We are very, very, um, I wouldn't say strict, but she's very, we're just very, very assertive about having any particular type of astral beings coming into our realm. Our play, our, our, our hub, I guess you could say, our hub or haven, I guess she's saying. Hub or Haven, our, our, our space, I could say our space is very well protected. And um, just for people to, to, to visit, it needs to come through a, a form of authority with us. And we're happy to meet you. We're happy to come in and welcome you in. But there needs to be a purification process coming together. And basically, you'll notice that when I went into the Delphi as well, too, um, there, there, there's that feeling of it as well, too, is like my I was like going through light. Right. As I, as I moved into light and that light was kind of like the purifier. And then I was able to see a little bit of the Delphi and oh, it's beautiful. It is a beautiful, beautiful space. Again, if you looked at it, you looked at, you'd see like lands that look like Sweden, right? If you're like looking at Sweden and it's open land, it looks very much like that, right? I've even seen like ancient Greek, uh, like arches as well too. Um, I can't even remember much of the, the names or the words of it, but there's kind of like a dome. And there's like pillars as well, too. There's meeting places. There's waterfalls. It's it is gorgeous. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous place. So I was very honored that the Delphi let me in that one time. That was before I was getting psychically attacked by another uh, regarding my crown chakra pertaining to a dragon. So this is, again, what they're saying is that you have to make sure you're purified because there are beings in the inner earth that really do not like you. They do not like humans and they will try to intercept. OK. So what we want to do is we want to create a secure path for you to come in so you can be purified with light and then you can come in and you can explore. But she says, please connect with me first. You go to Athena first. If this is for anybody, if you guys want to go visit the, uh, the, the Delphi, go and, see, go and see what their place is like in the astral, you have to go to Athena first. You have to get her permission. Otherwise, they won't even let you in. Okay, so that's very, very important. They're very, very, uh, very, very uh, assertive relating to the cleanliness of a soul as well too. They want to make sure that you have uh, a cleanliness to your heart. And like I said, it's kind of like a wave of light that comes through you and kind of washes you. And so you have this kind of pure connection with them. So that, that would be the answer to the question. I know I certainly had to go that myself when I was visiting the Delphi as well. Um, 
is there sort of a calibration chamber before you enter this realm? Not really a calibration chamber, no. It's like, again, a wave of light, right? So you're not really, it's not like you're going into like what Corey Good talked about with the, the Anshar, right? <laughs> is going into some bath and purifying yourself. They don't really, no, they, they don't do that. It's all light, right? It's all light, it's all harmonics. And it's kind of like just like a light scan that you just you go through this light it purifies you and they meet you and now they can start to show you around uh, upon certain conditions again they're very very assertive with certain areas that are being shown to humans right now so they're, they're kind of picky about that um karen's uh, karen quinn l anything in particular that i or we can do to help athena on her path she says you don't need to concern about us at all Right? You don't need to concern about what we're doing. We know what we're doing. We know how we're preparing ourselves. You need to get yourselves in order because many of you humans don't know what you're doing. Right? You tend to your own people. This is kind of what Athena is saying. She says, you just, she says, we appreciate your love of what you're sharing, but please tend to your own people. It's your people themselves that need the most help. You need to take care of your own civilization just as we are taking care of our own civilization. We are the last ones that require help from a third party, okay? But you humans need to work to get together and start working together as a civilization and helping yourself. So we appreciate the loving energy that uh, Karen has. Please direct that towards your fellow people that need that help because they need your assistance, okay? Work with your civilization. Don't concern about us. We'll be fine, <laughs> right? So she's saying that in a very, very gentle and kind way, but she's very appreciative of your heart. She's very appreciative and thankful that you are so loving and so caring. And she says, please just direct that towards your people because your people need it the most, okay? Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Fulfill Life Now says, hello, Athena. Big hug to you and yours. Thank you for, for your contact. Yeah, she's nodding her head and, and saying, showing appreciation as well, too. Um, <clears throat> okay, we have a kind of a second question here from Lilypad. I'm, I guess I'll do it, but just for, for everybody, I'm just going to try and get everybody for one question. I'll do this second question for you now, Lilypad, but basically just one question per person because we may have a lot more questions coming here. Uh, Athena, I'm trying to connect to my soul and spirit for personal growth, but not sure how to do it. Any advice? Calm yourself down. Serenity right? Serene lines, subtle lines, subtlety. You cannot discover harmony within yourself if all that's happening inside you is a vortex created hurricane, okay? You're not going to be able to find peace of mind if you're completely contained inside this hurricane. You have to see yourself past the surface. You have to see yourself past the body. This is kind of what both I and Athena are sharing with you, is that you want to grow past the skin. You want to grow past this canvas. You want to feel yourself as light. You want to be very soft and very gentle. Please, please be delicate. Be very, very gentle with your light. Feel the subtle energies that flow around you and connect with that. Your soul is a very, very delicate thing. It's very soft. It's very loving. It's very subtle. That's what you have to tune into. If you're loud, if you're just boisterous and you're, you got this hurricane of energy flowing through you, you're not going to be able to connect with your soul because you have said physical reality dominates. You are making physical reality dominate your being. You're not going into your soul reality. Your soul reality is very soft. It's very gentle. It's past the flesh. Okay, You have to see yourself as light. And you have to be gentle. It's like you're just looking at this very soft melody and you're just tuning in and you're so soft and you're so gentle and you're so quiet and you're hardly disturbing anything. You're very just creeping in there and you're just having that subtle energy and you're feeling it. It's very fine. It's very precious. It's very delicate. That's how you connect with your soul. Very open. Surrender to it. Surrender to its beauty. Surrender to its, its equilibrium of subtlety. Right? That's how you're connecting to it a lot more. Okay? Thank you. That's, that's the advice in connecting to your soul. Subtle, soft, delicate. Okay? Open, surrender. Okay, so um, here's one from Vincent. Athena, is there a particular healing modality that you really enjoy performing? They love music. Okay, they love toning. A lot of toning work they do. I can't really do it because my, my music skill is very, very limited. 
but they they sing like angels right what they'll do is for a person who is volunteering to have some healing done is that they'll encircle that person and they'll just start singing right they'll start singing it's almost kind of like a dance performance it's almost like an orchestra they'll start moving their hands around with energy this is kind of what athena is showing me they'll move their hands around they'll start going up and down the spine it's like they're negotiating the atoms within your body to become much more harmonious so they'll have a certain group of of uh, people together in a circle and this person will either be laying down on a table or they'll be seated whatever they prefer but they'll be it's like it's like this beautiful healing orchestra and their movements are just so soft that's why i'm kind of moving my hands like this they're very very soft they're like going into you know beautiful dance it's it's not like sufi dance or anything of that nature but it's very it's just very very delicate it's very flowing it's almost like looking at tai chi together with with uh with dance expressive dance in that way but they're they're toning as well too and it's like they all just join as one mind and everybody knows exactly what to chant, when to happen, when to move. It's, it's all just a perfect orchestra of healing. After that, the person just feels completely renewed and refreshed. It's like they came out of the mother's womb. They're so refreshed. They're so pure. So that's, that's, a, um, that's one healing modality that uh, Athena was showing me. It's just kind of like this circle healing dance that they do. It's really, really beautiful. They're really just gentle soft movements they're just going around and they're they're singing and their 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 pitches are so good because i'm hearing it in athena's mind right now she could hit every single keynote like with absolute perfection her voice is so good i couldn't even come close to that <laughs> my girlfriend's very very good at singing uh, but i'm not i'm just i'm kind of tone deaf in that way i just like hearing it from people uh, but she could hit every single keynote she could hit every pitch with absolute precision uh, it, it's perfect. It's like perfect song, but they, they do it not in the state of a song. It's all vibration. It's like beautiful music to resonate the cells within your body. And now they start moving the energies that don't belong out of your body. They flush it out. It, it is, it's amazing. There's nothing on earth like it right now. Nothing within our civilization like it right now. It's really, really amazing. If you were to go there and witness them doing a circle healing, I'm just seeing it uh, as a vision within my mind gorgeous it is absolutely beautiful so that would be the answer to your question vincent um here's one from francis yes i'm guilty of doing that with one of my children and she is now estranged from me i honestly felt i was doing the right thing lesson learned well believe me i felt that as a way too i've done that with my ex-partners as well too i've also done that with my own kids as well too so i've had those those situations as well too we learn we learn from those right lesson learned but it's just very important that, again, it's kind of like we have that new term now. We have pain fasting, okay? So if a person wants to be on their own, they want to go through these, uh, these emotions all on their own, please respect their space. I know, again, you have a lot of love for people. I've certainly had a lot of love for people like that. But basically what we're saying to them, and this is what they also receive and say, oh, also I'm impaired. Also I'm damaged. And so in order for me, for you to love me more, I have to be perfect, right? No. Love a person for their flaws. Love a person for their imperfections. You're not yanking out a toolkit and you oh, got to fix you here because you're damaged here. Blah, blah, blah. Right? And like I said, I'm guilty of that as well too. And we have to learn about giving a person space so that they can go through their own pain fasting. Okay? They have to hit breach. And once they hit breach, they will start to come back and they will say, okay, I'm willing to sit down with you and talk. Let them come to you rather than feeling like you always have to run to them. When they know they have to be by themselves, let them be alone so that they can pain fast. Okay. <clears throat> uh, okay, great. I just lost my spot here. <laughs> Let me go back here. There's another good, a good uh, comment there. Let's see here. <laughs> I got a two dollar contribution from Eliazar. Brad, come visit Dallas when my schedule allows it, man. If you got, if you got an event lined up and you want me to come to Dallas and you got people signed up. I'll be there with bells on, man. Absolutely. I just, I, I, love, I love to go to a lot of places in the world. And again, a lot of people come say, Brad, come to Australia. Brad, come to the Netherlands. Brad, come to New Zealand. Brad, come to Dallas. Okay, why? What's in, what's in Dallas? What's in Netherlands? What's in Australia? Oh, I can come see you. Well, I can't just be there to pop over to see one person, right? I want to see a bunch of you. So if you guys are putting together an event and you got a lot of people signed up and you want me to go there and present... I'll be there with bells on. Absolutely. I'm not just running all the way halfway across the country or the world to see one person. Okay. 
I want to see a bunch of you. So if you're putting that together, be more than happy to come together in that way. Okay. Uh, so here we go. Yes. Grandmama's an angels as a mom. It is so hard. However, yes, this is itself is loving them. Well, we're believed. We're made to believe that it's so hard, right? Because the whole idea is that as soon as we see a person in pain, we gravitate over to them. And do you know why we do that? Because we're so heavily empathic. We're so heavily compassionate. Humans are pretty much the most compassionate beings there are. That's how powerful we are. And again, we don't learn the state of restraint because even when we feel like we're hurting a person, there can be the aspect where we're actually hurting them, right? Rather than helping them, we're hurting them. So even if you feel like, oh, yeah, that person's in pain, I want to help them, and then you're sharing all this stuff, they just, oh, you think I'm broken. You think I'm impaired. You think I'm messed up. Well, that's not going to help me. So they may even just say, screw you. <laughs> Right? So that is the whole idea. Let a person figure this out for themselves. Think back to when you were in pain, okay? When you didn't want anybody else around and you wanted to be on yourself, you wanted to process these emotions yourself, and the time came when you were able to step out again and you were able to talk to people. But that time that you needed, that pain fasting, you have to see that as what other people are doing too. You're not the only one in the entire universe that does pain fasting. Okay, others will do that too. Your children will do it, your siblings, your mother, your father, your grandparents, your best friends, all of them will do it. Please give them their own space. And when they come to you, that's an invitation to assist. Okay. Um, in primal theory, yes. Uh, KJ just says the same principle of respecting another's space and pain applies in primal therapy. Uh, primal therapy. That's true though, right? That's the whole idea. If we interrupt in that way, we're contaminating their space, right? Space is a very, very sacred thing. This is why we have what's known as spaces of love, right? The space of love is just saying that if you really want to offer assistance to a person who's going through pain fasting, just bring their, their environment, put their environment in a lot of love, right? And just give them blessings and that's it. Let them take care of it in themselves. They're a free will human being. They have to learn that, okay? <clears throat> okay. Um, Claudia, regarding your question, the, the Delphi really don't look too much into our current events. So that she couldn't really tell you about what's happening in Poland or anything like that. She wouldn't be able to tell you that. Okay. So <laughs> not much she can really do with that. She says, we don't really focus too much on your affairs. We understand collectively about what's happening with your people, but we can't really measure it out into states of precise events. She knows that we're going through a, a flush, you know, that again, like that pipe. But she won't be able to tell you what's happening with Poland or with the United Kingdom or the United States or anything like that. She doesn't focus on that stuff. Uh, it's basically just we're, we're looking at a collective flow here and she can tell us what's happening with her people. And she's getting an impression about what's happening with us in that particular way. Uh, as far as I can share, share with you, uh, all of these countries are basically going through a type of energetic enema. Okay, they're going to you're going to notice that these countries, you know, like Poland, uh, the UK, uh, Ireland, you know, Norway, whatever you want to put into that, they're all going to go through their own particular types of enema-based flushes. They are cleaning out all of this old beliefs about suppression and oppression, okay? That is what's going to be happening country to country through specific timelines within now and the next couple of years especially, where you're going to have these really intense situations happening about politicians, government, arguing about lesbian, gays, bisexual, transsexuals, or arguing about money situations, or about abortions, or any of these things. This is all part of this crap getting out into the surface so that the people can flush it away, right? We're giving it all an enema. That's really what it is. This is why I say it's the pipe where there's pure water, right? The people that represent the pure intentions to go through change. And there's sludge, right? There's crap that's coming in at the same time, and it's all passing through this pipe. And it's us as this pure water that's flushing it out of the pipe altogether. That's what we're doing. And you're going to notice this country to country to country to country. You already know that if there is oppression, anything relating to one's own sexual orientation, one's own way of life in that way, that is oppression. And that's what's basically being swept out. That's what's being purged out of the pipe right now. So again, that will happen from country to country to country, okay? Just expect that within the next couple of years. We gotta flush out every country, every nation, its own people has to do this and giving it an enema 
and getting all this crap out of the way so that what remains is the pure water flow, okay? Okay, guys, we're going to probably take about one or two more questions, and then we're going to wrap up. Um, here's one here from uh, Vic Nile. Do the inner Earth civilizations ascend with us to the same 5D Earth in the 2037-2038 Ascension timeline? And I assume they will also have some of their people ascend and some humans, uh, and some remain similar to humans. From what I'm getting, no, the entire Delphi civilization is going. No one Delphi is, le is being left behind. That's how, that's how uh, together their community is, right? No one is left behind. This is even what Athena is. Not one of us will be on the third density Earth. Not one. Okay, so everybody is being prepared. This is what I say is that people are helping their own people, right? It's not about the idea of them interrupting a pain faster. But when they know that they, there are people that are behind, they will work with that person. And they all work together in community. And that person is open to receiving that. And of course, they'll be worked on. Not one Delphi will be left behind on third density Earth. Okay, we unfortunately can't say the same thing with humans. Okay, humans will be left behind. Okay, it's like I said, it's only about 560 million right now that are set to go to fourth density Earth. Okay, that could pick up a little bit more. It all depends. We have to start working on being of service to others, right? 51% or higher service to others. You start working in that mentality, you are compatible with fourth density. Whereas you get 70, 80, 90% of your time, eh eh, you're staying right here. So you want to be mindful about the service to self, service to others ratio. That's really what matters. I've even asked Spirit about this, I've asked Adronus about this. He says that is exactly how it is. The law of one was right on the money with that. If you don't want to see it in the form of percentages, that's okay. If you know in the majority that you're thinking about other people, you want to help other people, you're making things for other people, you're doing these things for other people, and that's getting 70, 80% of your day, fantastic. You're great. So that's really the mentality here is that we're spending some amounts of time with ourselves, but we're just using that time with ourselves to uplift ourselves, to take care of ourselves, to clear away our emotions, to go through pain fasting, right? Once we have done that, we're feeling great, we're feeling wonderful, we're really ready to assist, we're ready to help. What do you want to offer the planet? What do you want to offer other people? How do you want to brighten other people's day? Maybe you're just holding doors open for people and you're giving them a wonderful compliment as they step in. Complete and total service to others. That's fantastic. You're sitting down with a homeless person, you're talking to them, right? You're patting them on the back, you're asking them about them. 100% service to others. Great. That's what you want to do. This is why I'm doing all this work with you guys as well, too. I want to bring as much service to others together as possible and helping others as well. I'll have some certain time for myself to start going through some assortments of being, clearing myself out. But yes, I want to focus on service to others, right? Because that's where I want to go. I'm doing all of this for you guys as well. I love it too, but I want to do this all for you. This is why I'm giving all of these videos out there and, um, and doing all this work because this is, again, my own intention of how I want to bring service to others. But we will all do it divinely in our unique way. Brad, I want to go up and I want to play in a band and I want to entertain people. Great. Service to others. There you go. Right? That's fine. I want to do music. I want to paint a beautiful picture. I want to put it on a gallery. I want everybody to enjoy it. Great. Service to others. Right? That's it. When you think that others are in mind, that's what you're doing. You're putting that service to others mentality together. The universe doesn't forget that. Your vibration doesn't forget that, right? What you're doing is you're convincing your vibration 100% authentically and genuinely that you are more service to others than service to self, okay? That is the passing grade, okay? That's how you graduate. You are a little more service to others than service to self, and it's not even a lot. It's 51% or more. And if you are able to do that, you have graduated from third density, and you're moving into the fourth. This is like being in a school, okay? If you don't do the work, you know, piss on this, I'm not doing this crap, I'm just thinking about myself here, and I'm gonna wallow. Well, then you're gonna repeat a third grade again, right? You're gonna repeat grade three one more time, rather than just sitting here, I don't wanna do anything, right? It's all about your merit. It's all about your work. It's all about what you want to do pertaining to the state of service to helping other people. Anybody telling you, oh, you're just here for yourself, you're just here to get all these things, that's a selfish approach, and that's arrogance. And like I said, a lot of the New Age movement does that. And as I've said before, New Age movement is one of the biggest psyops there is, right? So the whole key here is working together with 
how you want to help another person. It doesn't even have to come down to spiritual terminology or spiritual understandings in that way. It all comes down to something simple. It all comes down to compassion. So if you have a compassionate heart that wants to give and help other people, that's why you're here. It's not about you. So you are working with yourself to calibrate yourself and going out and helping other people. That's your passing grade to fourth density. If a lot of us start doing that, absolutely, the percentages will start to rise. Unfortunately, on this planet, there's a lot more selfish people than there are selfless. That's a very sad thing, but that's true. How many people are watching this video right now? Do we have about five, six billion people watching this video or other videos similar to it? No. It's a very, very small community, guys, that we have pertaining to this whole spiritual field. Whether you're looking at a Deepak Chopra, whether you're looking at a, a Matt Kahn, whether you're looking at a, a Daryl Anka, right? Whatever it is. Very small group. Very tiny, right? Maybe a couple million at best. That's sad. It's a very sad thing. But really all together, when we look at it in hindsight, yeah, I mean, there's only about maybe five or six percent of the population right now that's currently in alignment to go to the fourth density. That could pick up over the next few years. I'm certainly hoping so. I'd love to see 10, 15, 20, 25 percent, 30 percent, 50 percent, everybody, 100 percent of the population to go over to fourth density. I would love to see that. But again, it's not my call. It's not my world. It's not my universe. It's God's world. It's God's universe. Okay. We're the ones that are working with this to explore ourselves, to understand what it is to be a God ourselves. And this is God's in training, exactly as Adronas has said. Okay, So I hope I really put that in perspective for everybody. Okay, It is all about service to others. Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap up uh, for today's broadcast. I really want to thank you. I want to thank Athena again for joining us. Thank you so much, Athena. My infinite love and blessings to you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your sharing from your civilization to ours. I bless you and thank you. Okay. So it's always great to talk to her as well too. Like I said, you guys can talk to her as well. Just go back through the recording and you can start with the preparation process with the three tiers and start connecting with her as well too. Okay. Uh, before I go, there's one question here. One San Remy. Do plants and animals count as others? Yes, but they're in that sense not something you need to worry about because they are without the type of sentient ego that we have. You don't need to worry about the animals, right? You don't need to worry about the plants. They're not the ones that are putting up picket signs and saying, hey, we're being mistreated, you know, or animals putting, picking up picking signs and saying, hey, we're not going to do this. We want our own union. <laughs> you don't need to concern yourself about that. That's the whole process. There's a whole new kingdom of animals that are on the fourth density, and there will be animals that will stay here on the third as well, too. That's all part of their experience as well, too. Animals, again, have a different aspect, right? They're second density. Some of them may move into third. Uh, again, when you're a soul, and here's the thing, this is what I'm going to end on as well, too. When you're a soul, you have to understand that just because what's happening here in physical reality and incarnation, it's not like this is the only boundary for you to grow, okay? Incarnation is not the only boundary for you to grow as a soul. Okay, when you transition from this body, I don't care if you're in third density. I don't care if you're an animal in second density. I don't care if you're part of the elements in the first density. You will go and you will expand and you will grow and you will move into spirit and you will start to get divine understanding, greater understanding. You will grow, you will expand, you will learn. And now, as you grow and you expand and you learn, and if you decide to come back incarnationally, you can go wherever you want throughout the density spectrums that is completely parallel or simpatico with the vibrational frequency that you're at, okay? So even if a person doesn't make the shift, right, doesn't go to fourth density, they transition maybe a few years after 2038, they go up, they do some spiritual work, they grow, they evolve themselves. Okay, now I get to go to fourth density earth. Sure, go ahead, right? That's how it works. It's not saying that everything pertaining to the necessity of your experiences is going to come through a flesh body incarnation. That's one of the greatest distortions there is. This is not the be all end all pertaining to an incarnation. It says you're not able to go any further uh, after you've transitioned from this body. You can't learn anything when you're up in spirit. That's a bunch of BS, man. Of course you can. In fact, you learn a lot more when you're up in spirit, because your thoughts instantaneously manifest. You see a lot more of yourself when you go into spirit. 
what we're doing here in incarnation is that we're looking into ourselves in a very, very unique way, in a very unique perspective, because we're all coming down to the solid physical dimension to lift it up, right? That's why we come here. We're coming here to say that we can do everything we can together so that this dimension doesn't have to exist. This dimension is a very small little nugget contained inside the astral realm, okay? And it's basically just functioning together with prisms, with technology, that basically condense this little pocket contained in the astral realm to make it solid. So our goal as a species and every other species together in the universe is to work together in uplifting this dimension so it doesn't exist anymore. So it really does not play that plane of solidity because it's a technology, right? It's like you're just completely dismantling the technology and the third density now starts to move back into the fourth again. That's really why we're coming here. We're coming here to take a very solid dimension and lift it up, but we're having a very unique experience of being solid in the process because it's a powerful experience. It's an amazing experience. It's being able to look at this in a very unique way to see how we learn about ourselves in a solid physical dimension. So please, guys, do not get this impression saying, oh my God, if I make the shift, I have to be stuck in third density for the next 75,000 years before the next fourth density shift. No, it doesn't work that way, guys. You continue to learn. You continue to prosper when you go into spirit world. Guess what? There's a lot of beings that never come back to earth again. Okay? They have their incarnation. They've done earth. I never want to touch it again. Okay? You don't have to. You're evolving yourself in spirit. You're staying in spirit for thousands of years, tens of thousands of years, millions of years. And you evolve yourself in that way. And you may want to go and incarnate in different dimensions that are maybe a lot more lighter. You can do that. Okay? Please listen when I say that. You can do that. It's not about you feeling that, oh, but if I don't make the shift, then I'm screwed. You're not screwed, man. This is all just part of the expression of your life here as it exists in this plane. When that life ends, you reflect upon a lot about what's happened, and now you work to evolve yourself in spirit, okay? This is not the idea that everything needs to happen contained in this physical dimension relating to your learning, your growing, and your expanding. And if anybody tells you that, I'm sorry, but they're completely incorrect. A lot of beings will just go off into spirit, and they'll start learning through spirit. They'll start working with all these wonderful, amazing, uh, powerful beings, and they'll evolve themselves. And now they can start to incarnate if they want to incarnate, to go to other realms that are of a higher light frequency, and they can play there. They can come back to Earth if they want, and they can play there as well too. All of this is based upon our own experiences, but it happens in the living world, and it happens in the spirit world. Through the living world and through the spirit world, everything evolves. Everything transforms. Everything changes. You are not just stuck in one realm to think, I have to get it right here, because if I go back to spirit, I won't be able to do a damn thing. <laughs> Absolutely incorrect. Okay? You are going to be able to do things in spirit as well, too. The learning continues. The prospering continues. The expansion continues. Your growth, your evolution continues. It never, ever stops. Okay? Please keep that in mind. If you guys are so concerned about trying to graduate to third density... It's not even that big of a deal, okay? This is just showing how you're being able to come. You cannot force your aspect of advancement, okay? It needs to come natural to you. Don't feel that this is a race. You want to work, even if we don't have a lot of time. It's okay. Go at your own pace and work with yourself in this physical body because it's a unique experience of one shifting from the third to the fourth. But when you're spirit and you evolve yourself, you can go right into the fourth, right after you transition from this body. Absolutely you can. If you are simpatico into the alignment of fourth density and you want to see that earth as a soul, you incarnate into a body, you go into fourth because your soul is simpatico to that frequency of the fourth density intelligence of the earth. Okay, So that absolutely can happen. It does not always have to happen through the aspect of harvest, even though that's a wonderful experience within itself. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful day, a uh, wonderful week. And I'll talk to you again next week. Again, uh, before I go, the offer is still available here on New Earth Teachings. Enter promo code ATHENA20 to receive a 20% discount off all products and services on newearthteachings.com. So I'll be available for a couple weeks before I go to uh, Mount Shasta because I won't be doing any online sessions when I'm in Mount Shasta. I got a class to teach while I'm there. 
So again, grab it while it's hot. <laughs> and of course, I'll be doing some bookings when I come back from Mount Shasta as well too. But I got a couple of weeks to spare. Uh, schedule is going to probably fill up pretty quickly. So uh, get to those sessions if you really want to have one with me as quickly as you can. Okay. Thank you guys. Take care. Have a wonderful rest of the week. And I'll talk to you next week. Take care. Namaste.